The fact that she was a woman was incredibly important. This had been very much male domain, especially experimental fiction in America. Kathiaka, 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 Kathiaka. That you know it's a bit fictive, but it's a hell of a lot better than what the reality seems. And after a while, you learn that the fiction becomes reality. 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 Fiction becomes reality that came when I was, to me when I was growing up, where I just thought they were superfluous. I wasn't really interested in these characters. I wasn't interested in the beautiful sentences of John Updike. Um, I found very little pleasure in reading them. I felt yeah. that culture was an imposition, that I was being given... I, when I went to school, it was always great culture. This is how you should think. This is a great work of art. It was the same thing with the formal art in the art world. And it didn't have anything to do with me. Kathiaka 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 me. I often feel that men get their power over me by pleasing me a great deal, so I feel there's a discrepancy there in our power. However, I feel that in certain ways can has power on me because I've behaved badly toward him by sending him that work and by using him so he can play on my guilt feelings a great deal. And I think the physical ways we relate are interesting for those reasons. Experimental fiction. Bombed out territory. Experimental fiction. Bombed out territory. I dream of fun. I need fun. Part 9. Love me like I loved you. Bryson's one true heir to idiocy. These are the love letters I sent to Kathy Acker. Kathy Acker. Dear Kathy, would you fuck me in the time hole? Yours, Zack. My dear Acker, would you let me fuck Kathy? 
Are you and Cassie distinctly singular and separate by first name and surname? Two wholly different beings that look the same, fuck the same, write the same, philosophize the same. Yours forever and always, Zach. Dear Cathy, it is I again. I cannot find your gravesite nor a place where fans, appreciators, Cathy Acker serial masturbators can lay their seed in hopes to impregnate your carcass to resurrect and define you as a holy hetero role model. Love, as always, from the unknown regions of this time, that time. I'm Zach Ferguson. Dear K.A., I wrote you a poem. Today, yesterday, forever days and no CD nights. Kathy Acker on her back, jacking off all over her just like that. Crude, unambitious, shallow, shite. I'd call you a cunt. But you would have liked that, wouldn't you? You used the word cunt and spread it open for all to see and to grow immune to. Testing it with tongue, mouthing words, burrowing into your elicited astral cunt jection. I am imagining a fake form, a sensual version, a romanticised version, a version that wasn't you. Who are you now? In death? I love you. Am I in love with you? Are you truly gay, bi, or a hater of labels? I must be a mean cunt to even consider I am a suitable masturbator raiser of the dead. I'm not into necrophilia. As one with the usage of the awful word cunt, I still do not want to be a corpse lover. Finally, you weak Americans, cunt is seen as good, juicy, wet. Not like an overcooked tuna steak from Iceland. Cunt is delicious. Cunt can be rotten. Cunt is rude. Cunt is where babies come from. Cunt tastes odd. Washcloth, rinse off. For my love, my one true obsession, Kathy Acker. Yours, as always, trench dick permitted by overt serial masturbator over your Google searched images. Z.F. Dear Kathy, Mm, ah, mm, ah, mm, uh-huh, uh-huh, duh, <laughs> Noises transcribed for you and only you. Lots of salacious love, ZF. Dear Kathy, I want to make love to you. Lots of love, Zach. Dear KT, if you got a chance to know this 20 stone Brightonian experimentalist in the flesh, in the past, in the now times, that or whether time travel is morally ambiguous enough to let us meet in different time zones and sectors, would there have ever been a chance you'd fuck me? I just need to know, like Chris Krauss needed to know whether Dick's dick was pliable and viable is mine yours now then in between bright and so air of supreme idiocy Zach Ferguson dear Kathy I have longed for you like I have longed for a bigger penis for so many years length and size I've always been told doesn't matter funny by a morbidly obese grandfather of whom took pride in having been unable to see his cock for now and 39 years. We take what we can from who we can in moments of total insecurity, yet it really does 
doesn't it? I read somewhere William Burroughs is a pencil dick. Legend made me semi hard to know this. Oh look, my penis is actually quite impressive in the paws of a tiny woman. Made me scared though that only men would accept a small dick rather than a would be known as LGBTQ plus person in the fleshy frame of being a punk rock looking Z male. Laughed at us, knowing the dick would satisfy no one, but well, a rather unpicky queer. Burroughs being one of my favourite thinkers, shakers, wankers and addicts in the world, I felt reassurance, but alas, that was way back when, when I was skinny. I too had one, a pencil dick. That wasn't a fully formed pencil cock, more of a bendy, floppy rubber that are supplied for a rage of the kids who are stupid and needed some assistance from the TA during Final Faker's Ams Day, usually assigned to a pencil dick dick, you know, that kind of dick, but as one with the pino pino dick mentality. Pencil dicks are not even floppy like those of firehose slongs, but I am now morbidly obese. I cannot relate nor find kinship with this reality of also being a pencil dick possessor like Burroughs. So in essence, I have a micro dick. Lost to the fat pubis. Own it. Own me, Kathy. Please own it. All me. Sad times at Brighton Heights. Yours, Zach. Ferguson. Dear Kathy, I am 36 pages into your latest novella and all I can honestly state is, fuck, I want you so bad. Your scope, your vision, your scope, your words, themes, audacity. I am impressed but also very threatened by greater expectations. The from beyond the grave variant of which is masterful, hilarious, intelligent, incomparable to anything else you have written since your untimely demise 24 years ago, 1997. You have yet to officially be marked down as alive in the annals of current history. I'll keep your secret as long as you reply, my love. Always and forever ever Zach Ferguson. Dear Kath, can I call you Kath? Maybe this whole publicity stunt of having acquired the long lost, long forgotten slash, let's be honest, the long hidden treasure slash, the unknown sequel to Greater Expectations that you put out in 1982 is much easier to accept than the reality of you having come back from the dead. Thanks to the likes of me and my cohorts. Fax me, even though I don't own nor know how to fax. Yours, Zach Fuckety Ferguson. Dear Kathy, I liken this event of your resurrection to that of the Burroughs resuscitation event, or a new variant of heroin. You know the breed by now. You must know it. What am I talking about was alchemized in the blood of postmodern deco strutting tanger boys and Burroughs' whole catalogue of works, all known and unknown. Journals, chapbooks, chicken scratch and turkey twine, burnt and concocted into some resin that eventually a ballsy ex chaperone to Marilyn Monroe of smoked. This Daddy, he said. Taste of sweaty balls and limp dick. Yes, yes, yes. We had all exclaimed, do not forget the bourbon. We all thought, tastes like bourbon. Yes, yes, yes. We again all exclaimed, that is Bill. The Bill Burrows. Shattering in post blues, clues, theme tunes, shivers. Played on repeat from a cracked glass dome television set. For a Burroughs fan who is more Down Syndrome than retarded, but we kept him close. To make our cause not look all inclusive or catering to inequality issues, our online arse hats bombard us about. 
We all exhaled, too pussy to try out ourselves, and we contained his exhalations that then was processed once again in a puppet from a set of Cronenberg's naked lunch, the mugwump form looked jaundiced and useless. We got an engineer mate to create a fan slash ventilator system. It worked slash we did it. And then with that puppet exhaling between where the rubber had dissipated broke down and for no fun of we guided those clouds and ensured they puff wafts into the grass where partial burrows DNA resided. Burrows didn't want to come back to us, though much to his chagrin, all this was produced. All this produced was a reincarnated cat with Burroughs' twisted 100-year-old wrinkled features yowling at James as he fed him kibble and looked longingly at the cat's genitals, bending down to fondle them. James took the cat to bed and killed it with silent, liberating love, whispering, Lover, lawyer, owner, editor, Bill and in relation to you, Bill, my great friend and fucker, I don't know if your DNA works the right, and if anyone wants to come sneeze your name, they need my permission. I'll strum nicely with my white art museum handy. I'll strum nicely with my white art museum handy with care gloves. Oh, I will, Bill. Death. Yours wasn't a comfortable one now, was it? Ravaged by cancer, you wanted to come back with mysticism and lies. I'm sorry that you were led down this road, but it was a road you decided to take yourself upon. Bravery in the face of all odds. As always, your mystique, grief, beauty, you bested it. The odds that were and continue against you. Cancer is embodied as a physical oozing molasses looking bounty hunter. We trapped him. Used the plunger to extract him, it, bit by bit. Sold off to the masses that deserve to die of the big sea answer and not the other big sea ant. If ever I got the big sea answer and not the other big sea ant, I would rather die quick. Painlessly in a sleep. Did you suffer, my love? I hope not. Did somebody keep your breast tissue? Or was it disposed of, riddled with parasitical nastiness? I will lick all those wounds clean. Suck all where your breasts used to be. Continue stimulation to the tissues where they were. It will, it must give back your breasts. I love you, Kathy, so much. Yours, Zach Ferguson. I dream of her, only her. I watch her interviews, scratched and blemished with old celluloid aging. Like liver spots to the cells flesh the aging is both scratched and dotted and smeared. Those that came when I was, to me when I was growing up, where I just thought they were superfluous. I wasn't really interested in these characters. I wasn't interested in the beautiful sentences of John Updike. Um, I found very little pleasure in reading them. I felt that culture was an imposition, that I was being given... I, when I went to school, it was always great culture. This is how you should think. This is a great work of art. It was the same thing with the formal art in the art world. And it didn't have anything to do with me. I often feel that men get their power over me by pleasing me a great deal, so I feel there's a discrepancy there in our power. 